Hey, I'm Creech, and this is Creech and Cars, where I talk about car news, history, and culture. A few months back, I made a video talking about the few concrete details we had about Fisker's upcoming pickup truck, which we knew then would be called the Alaska. But now, all of the waiting has paid off, as Fisker finally unveiled the production version of the Alaska earlier this week, and in this video, I'll get you completely up to date by taking a look at the exterior and interior design of the Alaska, and then going over the mechanical and performance specs of this fully electric truck. Finally, I'll go over pricing details and trim levels, and then give my opinion on whether or not the Alaska can succeed in the current truck market. Henrik Fisker has had a roller coaster career in the automotive industry with extreme highs designing BMWs and Aston Martins and the lows of his previous startup failures, but his current fully electric startup, sharing his last name, is on a winning streak after delivering its first units and getting positive reviews from customers and the media. Thursday night, Fisker held a conference called the Fisker Product Vision Day in Huntington Beach, California, where the company showed off four near-production concepts, including an off-road trim of the Ocean, the Ronin, a GT convertible, and the Pair, a subcompact hatchback. I do plan on covering those in separate videos, but in addition to those models, Fisker finally officially revealed the Alaska, a small pickup truck. So here it is. Like I said, this is a smaller pickup truck that sort of fits in between the midsize and compact truck segment, and it's built on the same platform as the Ocean, although it's a tad longer than the Ocean. Taking a closer look at the lights, I really like what Fisker has done here. The main headlight design is similar to the Oceans with the slim LEDs, but below that is a grouping of LED bulbs that I guess would serve as fog lights, but they mostly just add to the aggressive and off-road appearance to the truck. The hood design is clean with just a couple of lines that run down to a large Fisker badge, and below the badge, Alaska is spelled out, and there isn't really a grill design, just a front body panel and a lot of black plastic cladding. There are three lights along the bumper and some tow hooks to play into the off-road look, but aside from the lights, I think the front end could look a little nicer. Coming around to the side, the Alaska has a muscular profile with large fender flares and blocky looking wheels that are unique without looking stupid. I think the door and bed design reminds me a lot of the outgoing Chevy Colorado, but in a good way. There's more plastic cladding along the sill and fenders, and then if you'll notice that little piece that rises from the rear door window, that's similar to the Ocean, but this one has the Alaska badge of course, I really like that little design detail. There are flush door handles that are again similar to the Ocean, and the mirror caps are accented in a gloss black color. This is probably an option, but the truck that has been shown off is equipped with roof racks. The body rounds out to the bed, and the production version does feature the large Fisker lettering that we've seen with some concept drawings. Again, I like the light design here. It's a thin LED strip that looks futuristic while still being clean and simple. Now let's take a closer look at the bed because Fisker has put a lot of time and energy into making the best use of a small space. Being closer to the compact segment, the Alaska comes only in the crew cab configuration and with a four and a half foot bed. The tailgate is electronically operated and once it's open, we can see plenty of lighting and more interestingly, the walls are completely flat instead of having the wheel wells protrude into it. This hints at something similar to the Ram boxes on Ram trucks where the space around the wheel well turns into a little toolbox and that new shape makes it easier to load geometrically shaped items. Another really cool feature of the bed is the Houdini door. This is similar to the Chevy Avalanche which allowed access to the cabin from the bed, but the Alaska makes this process very easy as the barrier to the bed simply drops below the floor at the touch of a button. With the seats folded down, this essentially creates a 7.5 foot bed. Now let's take a look inside. Henrik Fisker says the interior was designed with a forest theme, and continuing with the sustainable mission that Fisker has had from its founding, the interior is created using only sustainable materials. The interior that's shown is mostly black with some wood trim and green trim seats, thus creating the forest theme. The wood material is made from reclaimed wood and actually has a softer fabric-like texture to it. The steering wheel is simple with a two-spoke design and a few controls mounted to it. Out of the wheel is the small rectangular fully digital gauge cluster and to the right of that is the huge tablet style infotainment screen. This should be similar to the one in the ocean which is a little over 17 inches diagonally and can be oriented vertically or horizontally. 
We can also see another tablet style screen for the passenger, but we don't have too many details on that right now. The infotainment system should be similar to what is currently found on the ocean, and in addition to one normal sized cup holder up front, there is what Fisker is calling a big gulp cup holder. It's essentially just a massive cup holder in the center console, so you know it was designed for the American market. So that's everything with the design, but we do have a good amount of information about the powertrain and mechanical specs. First of all, like I said earlier, the Alaska is built on the Ocean's platform, although it is slightly modified, and Fisker is calling the modified platform the FT-31. Modifying an existing platform instead of creating an entirely new one will save Fisker a lot of money and time, but more on that later. We also know for sure that the base model will have a range of 230 miles with an option for up to 340 miles of range on a single charge. While we don't know specifics about the motor setup, with the platform being similar to the Ocean, we can't expect the base model to have one motor and a higher trim level with a dual motor all-wheel drive setup. Using the same setup as the Ocean, the single motor Alaska would be front wheel drive and have around 275 horsepower and a 0 to 60 time in the 7 second range. The dual motor setup would place one motor on each axle and it would total around 560 horsepower and 540 pound feet of torque. And while it isn't a huge truck, it should still be able to tow somewhere around 4,000 pounds when properly equipped. Borrowing a lot from the ocean is the most efficient way for Fisker to produce a pickup truck, and this means that Fisker is able to target a base price of $45,400 and is saying that deliveries will begin in under two years. This is really good news for Fisker fans, especially when you consider the $45,000 price tag does not take into account federal or state tax credits, which can effectively bring the price into the 30s. I would expect the trim levels to be similar to the Oceans, with the base trim being called the Sport, and again starting at, at $45,400. Then there would be the Ultra trim, which would start in the mid to upper 50s, and the Extreme trim, which would start in the mid to upper 70s. If production comes in on time, the first Alaska should be 2025 model years. Now that we have all of that new information from the official reveal, will the Fisker Alaska be successful? I think this is a really easy question to answer if Fisker is able to deliver on the price and timing. I have no doubt that Americans would be rushing to snatch up a sub $50,000 fully electric truck coming in the next couple of years, and internationally there would be a decent market for this model in areas that have the infrastructure for charging EVs. During the production Vision Day event, Henrik Fisker referred to the car market as a pie up for grabs as we undergo electrification, and he stressed getting this vehicle to market on time so that Fisker can take and keep a good portion of the market share. Even though the Alaska is essentially a truck version of the ocean, Fisker still has a ton of work to do, and the two-year timeline is still very tight. That being said, Henrik Fisker believes the company is well ahead of the competition when it comes to developing a cheap electric truck. And really the only thing left for Fisker to do is deliver on the Alaska. So that's everything you need to know about the Fisker Alaska, an upcoming fully electric pickup truck. Let me know what you think about the Alaska in the comments below. And do you think it can compete with gas rivals like the Ford Maverick? On this channel, I talk about car news like this, as well as history and culture. So if you like this video, check out some of the other videos on the channel and subscribe so you don't miss future uploads. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.